Suppose a n is a sequence and a n k is a subsequence of a n. The whole point of this lesson is to explain this simple inequality that n k is greater than or equal to k. It's a real important fact about subsequences. I'll assume that you already know what a subsequence is and perhaps have already seen my lesson proving that a sequence converges to a limit if and only if all of its subsequences also converge to that same limit. In that proof, we use this result and we're gonna use it again in future proofs, so I wanna make sure we all understand it. And I'll leave links in the description to my lesson introducing subsequences and my lesson doing that proof. So if you haven't seen those and you wanna check them out, links in the description. But let's get into this. What does this mean? In a nutshell, what this is telling us is that the kth term of a subsequence is at least k terms in to the original sequence. That's because each term of a subsequence has to be moving forward in the original sequence. So let's get concrete for an example. Consider this sequence, 101, 102, 103, 104, and so on. We could create a subsequence from this sequence by selecting, let's say, the odd terms. So a subsequence consisting of 101, then 103, then 105, and so on. Notice that here we have that n1 is equal to 1. This means the first term of our subsequence is the first term of the original sequence. So you see this satisfies the inequality. n1 is indeed greater than or equal to 1. Going over here, we have that n2 is equal to to three. This means the second term of our subsequence is the third term of the original sequence. So again, notice speaking in terms of this inequality, the second term of our subsequence is at least two terms along in the original sequence. It happens to be three terms along, in fact. And then if we look at the third term, n3 is equal to 5. This means the third term of our subsequence is the fifth term of the original sequence. Again, talking like this inequality says, the third term of the subsequence is at least three terms along in the original sequence. It happens to be five terms along in the original sequence. Again, this is true because by definition of a subsequence, each term needs to be moving forward in the original sequence. Perhaps we should talk about these indices a little more. Remember that k is indexing the subsequence. So a n 1 is the first term of the subsequence. And consider this completely separate from what we did over here. So just as another example, n 1 could equal 7, for example. That would mean that a n 1, the first term of our subsequence, is a seven, the seventh term of the original sequence. So again, k is indexing the subsequence and the value of nk tells us the position in the original sequence that we're getting our term for the subsequence. So for another example, consider maybe a n four. That's the fourth term of a subsequence. If n four equals say 12, then the fourth term of the subsequence is a12, the twelfth term of the original sequence. Again, the kth term of a subsequence is at least k terms along into the original sequence. And this is just by definition of a subsequence. So we can think of nk itself, and really this is what it is, it's a sequence of numbers that's picking out terms from the original sequence. Like if nk equals something like this, two, four, six, eight, and so on, that's telling us that our subsequence 
consists of the even position terms in the original sequence. Take the second term, the fourth term, the sixth term, and so on. Now by definition, this sequence that picks out terms for our subsequence, this has to be increasing. The terms of the subsequence have to be moving forward in the original sequence. All right, now before I repeat myself anymore to finish things off, let me just show you like an excerpt of when we might when we might find this fact useful. So suppose that we know a sequence a n diverges to infinity, and we want to prove that all of its subsequences diverge to infinity. In that proof, we might say something like this. We know that there exists a natural number, big N, so that for every term of our sequence after the big nth term, those terms of the sequence are greater than some number M. We know that because our sequence diverges to infinity. Now, if we're trying to prove that all of its subsequences also diverge to infinity, we can now employ this result. Because we know if we go more than big N terms into our sequence, we're guaranteed this inequality. So we just have to go that far as well in our arbitrary subsequence, which we can do using this result, and we'll again be guaranteed that inequality. So what I'm saying is that we can say for every K greater than big N, we know that NK is greater than big N. And how do we know that? Well, because NK is greater than or equal to K, and K is greater than big N. So that's how we get that this is greater than big N. So what we're saying is that if we go K terms into our subsequence, well, that has to be at least K terms into the original sequence. Since K is greater than big N, that means that we've gone more than big N terms into our original sequence. So all terms of our subsequence, given this K condition, will be past the big nth term of the original sequence. And so this inequality would apply to them. So that's an example of where we would use this fact in a proof about subsequences. And again, we also use this fact in the proof that a sequence converges to a limit if and only if all of its subsequences converge to that same limit. So check that out. Again, link in the description. We use this result and it's a really cool proof. And don't sweat it if you didn't follow quite what I was doing here. It was a bit of a hurried explanation, just showing you an example of how this is useful. But again, what's most important is that you understand what it's telling us. What it's telling us is that the kth term of a subsequence is at least k terms along in the original sequence, because each term of a subsequence has to be moving forward in the original sequence. I refer to this as a result like a minute ago, but remember, it's just a fact. It's, it's a fact resulting from the definition of a subsequence. A subsequence is defined to consist of terms that are moving forward in the original sequence. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments because it's an important result, and I think it's a little tricky just because of it having to do with all these indices. So let me know if you need any clarification in the comments, but I hope this helped. Says, oh, what a lovely day. It's tight rope, funeral bends to his side.